Cat Jam? Mundo. I patch, you're absolutely right. We are going to be talking about Mundo today. Because he goes where he pleases. Me. Me here for Mundo. Let's uh let's get to it, shall we? So 11.12. This year's flown by. We've had 12 patches this season. Unbelievable. This one is gonna be a light one. Um excluding Mundo. So Mundo's getting a little mini rework. We're gonna be looking at him later today. Hopefully we're gonna get a couple games on him even. Uh so first up it is Dr. Mundo. He is updated. Cure every patient and go where you please with the updated Dr. Mundo. Dr. Mundo ability rundown. Shall I take a look at this? I think we should. It's only fair. Let's get to it. All right, so very... No, no, actually, this is this is different already. So his passive, right? When he gets hit by a displacement... Is it just displacement? Let's see here. Dr. Mundo resists the next immobilizing effect that hits him, instead losing current health and dropping a chemical canister nearby. Dr. Mundo can pick up by walking over it, destroying a portion of his maximum health and reducing the passive cooldown. Enemies moving over the canister destroy it. So, one thing that I want to check out is... Because they also did a change to Force of Nature. Oh, actually, no, no, they're doing the change of Force of Nature. Never mind. That'll be next patch. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll come back to that. But anytime he gets hit by a CC, a hard CC, so stuns, snares, displacements, so we're looking at like singe, singe flips, knockups, all those things. He's just like, I'm Mundo. I go where I please. And then he gets an HP bonus when he walks over that canister that he drops crazy crazy talk dr monto also has increased health regen based on his max hp so that's what his current passive is but he's getting a bonus to his passive q infected bone saw dr monto throws an infected bone saw dealing magic damage to the first enemy hit based on the current hp and slowing them same as current live yep Hot Zappa. Mundo electrocutes himself for a few seconds, dealing persistent magic damage to nearby enemies and a strong and storing a portion of the damage he takes as gray health. At the end of the duration, Dr. Mundo deals a burst of magic damage to nearby enemies and heals his gray health if an enemy is hit. Heal reduced if only minions or monsters are hit. Interesting. Dr. Mundo can recast Heart Zap to end its effects early. So Heart Zapper, right? You're doing AoE damage around you. But you're also healing for a portion of the damage that you take as long as you hit somebody with the final explosion. And it says that... Okay, so... We're going to have to take a look at this guy closer. Because is it all the damage that you take during that duration is healed back? Or how is the gray health calculated? These are things I want to know. We're going to be looking at it later. Uh, passive, Dr. Mundo has bonus attack damage increasing based on his missing health. That's his passive. That's what his E used to be just standard. Active, Dr. Mundo slams his medical bag into an enemy, dealing physical damage based on his missing health. If the enemy dies, they are swatted away, dealing his ability's maximum damage. Mi excuse me, minimum damage to enemies they pass through. So, oh wow, okay. So similar to like a Scion E? Is what I'm thinking, but it has to kill the kill the target. Interesting. Okay, right on. Maximum dosage. Oh, he gets super, super buff. Look at this guy. He gets straight up huge. Huge. Dr. Mundo pumps himself with chemicals, instantly healing a percentage of his missing health. He then heals a portion of his maximum health over a long duration, gaining bonus move speed and attack damage while healing. So, if you guys remember his old R, he used to take a percent of his current HP and then heal for maximum HP. 
So it's removed the negative portion of his old ultimate and it looks like just positives. You'll still want to use it probably when you're uh, when you're low because it instantly heals a percent of your missing HP. But increased move speed, increased attack damage, these are good things. And then for those of you that are excited about different looking skins, you know, get excited. Back to everybody else. All right, Aphelio. So Aphelio looks like he's just getting an all around buff. I was taking a look at this. So if we just read this tiny gray test, gray text, base magic resist and AD growth increased. Maximum number of attacks decrease on hit damage increased. So he scales better with AD than he does with attack speed for Severin. Healing for basic attacks decreased. Healing from abilities increased. For of the mini chakram damage decreased. Sentry damage increased. So more damage from putting out the sentries, less damage from the um, little I turned into an assassin with chakrams. If you get close to me. But I think all around this is going to be a good buff. So 4 MR early is huge. AD growth per level. At level 10, that's 6 AD. Not, not huge, but it's going to be noticeable, right? Severum, the scythe pistol. Number of attacks nerfed. But however, the on-hit damage, you're looking at... 5% more damage on hit. At level 13. So I guess not huge. Well, 10 base damage. And 5% more. Meh. You're hoping that Mundle isn't a troll pick now if you're against triple AP? Yeah, I think I think all in all he's gonna be pretty good. Right? Especially with the uh with the Warmog exchange that we just experienced. Like Warmog's gonna be pretty smurf on him. He'll just get a lot of healing. I think um, next patch, when Force of Nature changes go live, it's going to be even better, right? Because he's going to get hit with hard CC. He'll ignore it, but he'll still get 8% max HP over four seconds. I think it's going to be kind of nutty. If that's how it works, we still have to test that once that goes live. Oh, hi, Aaron's. Welcome back. Uh, Crescendum the Chakram. Less damage with this guy. Not a whole lot. Honestly. Sentry damage up. Okay. Honestly, I think I think he's still gonna be in a fine spot. First and foremost, yes, it is an Aphelios buff. True, true, true. He's a very difficult champion to play, but this I think he'll be in a good spot. You're gonna have to try him out. If you're a Aphelios player, you know better than I, but all in all, I would be excited about this. And I've been playing a little bit more AD champions lately, so I might I might be playing a little bit more Aphelios in the near future. Draven's going to be doing more Draven things earlier. Five more bonus damage on his Q early. So that's, in essence, you're going to be doing five more damage per auto attack at level one. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty nice. And then late game, you get 5% more bonus AD. And 5 AD. Yeah, just 5 AD and 5% on your bonus AD scaling across the board. I think Draven's going to like this. He's going to like it quite a bit. Nar, base AD down. Okay. Honestly, probably probably deserved. He's like a quasi semi range, semi melee, but he gets like free healing when he transforms into melee. So he's a relatively safe top pick. He's really good in competitive and pro play. So that makes sense that they're toning him down a little bit. He's too safe. Uh, base armor increased, Q damage ratio increased. Okay, so again, they're buffing Hecarim. Hecarim, I don't think, was in a bad spot. They're saying that he's in a bad spot. Okay, so honestly, we don't have very many ranks to uh, to take a look at. Here's his U.GG scores on the day of the patch. 
He's 49.43%. Can we go back to 11 point... 11? I want to see. We cannot. Oh, well. So people just still don't know how to pop off with this guy, apparently. That's, that feels bad. Because I think he I think he was already in a fine spot, and this should push him over the edge as people start playing him and getting a little bit better at him. Um, 85% bonus AD on his Q for a ratio. His Q cooldown is so short. I think he's fine. Time to run free, horsey. Yeah, his clear is going to be fantastic. His dueling potential in the early game is really, really good. I don't see why Hecarim doesn't have a over 50% win rate already. But because Hecarim is getting buffed, you're going to see a little bit more champions that do well into Hecarim. I, and I'll, I, I will always swear by it. Trundle is the number one counter to Hecarim. Because Hecarim, he'll ult into your team. You ult Hecarim. Hecarim's now super squishy. Hecarim dies very quickly. Play Trundle, alt Hecarim when he engages. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. He's going to pop. He's going to die. You're going to win. You run the rest of the team down. Oh, let's go. Alawi, base mana growth increase. Not a huge change. Mana scaling, 10 more mana per level. Meh. Jarvan, W cooldown decrease. I think Jarvan was in his fine spot before. Three seconds off of his W. That will let him stay a little bit healthier. Not a super impactful change for him, but it does provide a little bit more utility other than just the survivability, because remember his W does provide the slowing too. So a little bit more stick potential. And with the Gore Drinker changes that they're talking about to come through, you might see a Jarvan with Gore Drinker, or excuse me, um, Stride Breaker. Because his W will slow, Stride Breaker will slow. So he can just be like a very sticky, annoying bruiser. I'm gonna love it. W on hit damage increased. Do, 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 do. Well, it's been feeling a little rock soft than solid. Wow. Combined with Bramble's nerf. Okay, so W does more on hit damage. Plus 15% armor. Wow. Okay. So it's getting a 5% armor scaling. And 5% more, or excuse me, 5 more base damage. Full armor Malphite's going to be spooky. Ramus, W base armor increased, 40. R cooldown decreased. I, I gotta be honest with you guys, I haven't seen Ramus like at all. I know he's now like the Sonic Mimi super fast hop over walls engage guy, but I haven't seen him in any live games. Maybe one in ranked, but he's just one of the champions that kind of gets, I don't know. I think he's good. I think he's fantastic into AD comps, but... There's just so many other uh, faster clearing and higher utility champions out there. I don't know. Maybe maybe we we need to keep an eye on them. We'll see how this this change goes for him. Nasus passive life steal decrease. Honestly, it's needed. Uh, the divine thunder buff on Nasus was just too good. His R and his E do a lot of magic damage, which is kind of like not really hidden damage because you do notice it pretty pretty quickly, but Divine Sunder gives him Magic Pen, and it does a lot of damage, and he stacks really well. So, 2% lifesteal off of his passive, it's really not going to touch him that bad. I think he'll still be a top tier pick. Renekton, Q, non-champion healing reduced. Renekton has plenty of sustain, similar to Nasus. I don't think this is going to affect him that much. Non-champion healing. So they didn't touch his champion healing. It's just non-champion healing. He won't be able to heal as much off of the wave. And it's it's really not that much. Empowered, they took three, three HP per uh, empowered Q. It's nothing. He'll be all right. He'll be fine. W initial damage decreased and return damage increased. 
Oh, okay, yeah. So his W is easier to dodge on the way back. That's their that's their thought process here. So they moved some of the damage. They took 25 damage off the front end and put it on the back end. Ooh, but they also took out 5% scaling overall. So it is just a straight up nerf. Right on. Ooh, dear. Removing some of the base damage, thank goodness. He's still just building like straight tank. Straight tank. And doing a lot of damage. So they're like, you know what? Base damage is nerfed again, but higher AP ratios. So if you are one of the Udyr abusers and you're still wanting to abuse him, you can still build tank. You just build the most efficient item in the game. Build a dark seal. You're going to be getting, what is that, like 65 AP from a 350 gold item? The Pyro, I can't stack my Dark Seal. Doesn't matter, you're still getting 15 AP and 40 HP from a 350 gold item. If you're building Phoenix Stance on Udyr, grab Dark Seal and laugh at people when you're dealing a bunch of damage. Thank me later. Varus, W maximum bonus damage decreased. Burst Puff and Patch 11.4 on his W made his Lethality builds especially powerful, so we're pulling back accordingly. 4% less. Interesting. Zanya's Udyr is now a thing. True. Yeah, build Dark Seal and Zanya's. And Straight Tank. You're still gonna love it. Wukong! Base damage growth decreased. Q damage ratio decreased as well. I... I like Wukong. He can be very oppressive because he's got an, he he has two auto attack resets, right? His E auto attack resets and his Q definitely auto attack resets. With the added attack speed from his E, I think he's spooky. So this is a much needed much needed nerf, especially with the Divine Sunder and Black Cleaver buffs. Ziggs, this is just a, a quality of life increase more than anything because the missile speed on his R is increased. You won't really notice it at close range because it's still a minimum 1.2 second travel time. But when you're doing like a crossed is E. Yeah, Aaron's allergies are killing me. I've got a headache. And you know what? Fingers crossed. I might be hitting puberty. Thank you for pointing that out. <clears throat> ah. Rude. Rude. Ziggs. 20 more, eight. 20 more damage at level 9, because you are going to be maxing Q first. Toxic mods indeed. And that's it. Cool. Yep. Bug fixes. Eh, I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> Those of you excited about swimsuit season, Dolly, we're looking at you. You can, uh, you can download this. If you want to make this your background, more power to you. Just click on this, right click, save image as. And, uh, you know. Have at it, ladies. Go with what you feel. Dolly. Downloaded already. <laughs> uh, of course you did. All right. Let's go. I think we touched on everything. I'm excited to try out Mundo and maybe get a little bit better at Aphelios. If you haven't already, though, hit subscribe and be here live so you can ask questions if you have questions. But we're going to get to it. Bye, YouTube. And scene. All right. <laughs> Aaron's making fun of my voice cracks. We were trying to gloss over that. We can edit it out. We can edit it. It'll be fine.